This is the guts of a dead, or pretty much dead, extreme power WPI 75, or WPI 175, 175 watt continuous 350 watt peak inverter that I've had for a number of years, and because the output on it is very unstable and it often doesn't want to work, and because I have a bunch of other better inverters, and because I need the transformer out of this for a project, it's getting parted up. But first, I figured I might as well do a GITS video. Overall, fairly typical for a um, cheap inverter from of late 1990s, early 2000s design. There's a date code of April 24th, 2001 on the PCB silk screen. And a lot of these chips have either 1999 or 2001 date codes. The um, CD4013 over there has a... Um, or that's an MC14013, but it's effectively a CD4013, just a different part number. Uh, it has a 2008 code, so. Anyways. Um, internally, there's a couple of. Uh, there's a K324, um, which is a Fairchild part number, or at least I'm assuming that's Fairchild, assuming these are legit Fair Fairchild parts. That's their term for an LM324 um, quad operational amplifier and a um, K339 quad comparator. Those are for various output protection uh, circuitry, things like over potential, um, um, ex over temperature, like the thermistor by the transformer to detect an overheat condition and for various metrology stuff like that. And there's a um, KA3525 a PWM chip. That is what is driving the transformer primary. Uh, by way of this pair of um, international rectifier P60N06 uh, MOSFETs. And then there's four IRF640s for the um, output H bridge. And there's a KA556, which is what controls the um, output frequency and duty cycle. And a CD4013, and the 4013 uh, CMOS logic tip, don't remember what part number that is of. And probably put that in the description. But that's pretty much all the output control circuitry there is, it's uh, fairly simple. And as you can see, this one I've had to make a couple of modifications to, like the original receptacle died in this about three years ago, or actually almost four years ago, so I had to cut that out and install a new receptacle, which is why that's in there. Also, to pull the front panel off and take the switch out, so that's why they so had to cut off and resolder the switch. I had to replace the input cables, because those were 14 gauge, which is laughably small. Actually, it might have been even smaller than that. I had to replace them with this 12 gauge stuff, put in an external fuse holder because the original one, which was just a couple of um, quarter inch fast on terminals in a uh, plastic molding that originally was in that slot, disintegrated. So, in Chinese quality, what do you expect? Um, then the output transformers I'm going to gank out of the thing. And then just a couple of other things like the output um, the transformer secondary rectifier that's. Double HER three zero three, so fairly typical. Um, and the beeper for various warning things. And um, but anyways, what I was planning on doing with this was just uh, reverse engineering the um, various passives connected to the um, K three five two five, and. Um, <coughs> So I can determine the operating frequency of the transformer because it's overall fairly simple to hook up. There's just a couple, of, there's just a pair of primary windings and uh, a center tapped secondary. Although the center tap is obviously not being used, it's just being used as a um, mechanical support for the PCB. And. Um, yeah, it's also nice to just take the MOSFETs out because I can use those. Although I've got ordered some uh, better MOSFETs for the inverter that I'm planning on building from this transformer. 
because I can't easily find a source for transformers of this nature. Um, so uh, until I can find that, I'm just going to be getting transformers out of dead inverters. And uh, also another thing to note is that the output or the or the 12 volt input ripple suppression capacitor is bulged. Because I imagine, given the crap original cables that this had, the um, meant that this thing was operating at probably well above its ripple current specification, and also on a, a 16 volt capacitor and a 12 volt system, which means it's actually going to see potentials in excess of probably in the neighborhood of. 13 volts to 14 and a half volts is um, a little pushing it because the potential rating on these is generally the absolute maximum continuous rating and then you, and you generally want to drive them on a lot less than that but anyways made in China what do you expect and there's the um, a 1N540 something um, reverse polarity uh, Dad, they want to force 105404. So fairly typical. The way this works is that if the polarity is reversed on the input, it just shorts out this fuse, popping it. But anyways, fairly typical inverter. <laughs>